Hey guys. Oh, these phone lines. How crazy. You can't get hold of anybody for anything. So, uh, but I don't want to stick on that energy because this morning you might have seen I was very emotional, rightly so. Um, everything's changed. Everything's, you know, you, you know it's coming and you expect it's coming. And it's uh, when my company let me go this morning, it was, I was like, you know, it's the right thing to do. I understand why you have done it. Um, I know they had no other choice the way they did it. Not necessarily the greatest, but you know, whatevs, it happens and we go on. Um, and then I came home and I was like really emotional and, um, you know, um, I don't want to ever take away anyone else's pain, but you know, I went through my own process and, um, the biggest thing that was calling to me and I also had a friend say to me, you really should go connect with the earth and just let go of this. Cause they, many of my friends know that if I get too stressed, I just become this high strung Tassie devil. And, um, so I went, well, you know what? what, good point. I need to get out of here. Hey Vivian. And, um, and then go reconnect and just ground myself. But before I did, I had a few great conversations with a couple friends of mine. One of them's a shaman and she was like, Shana, the world is cleaning and there's so much more at play here that we don't even realize. And, um, uh, I've been contemplating going back to mining. I've been contemplating all kinds of thoughts and processes and options. Um, but also I didn't want to get on the phones and waste half of my day trying to get through to companies and fix out my financial affairs. So I thought, you know what, Pfft, let it go. And instead of having a tizzy, I'm actually going to bugger off and go up the mountain. So I decided to drive over an hour. And before anyone has a hissy fit about isolation, I made sure it was just myself. I drove to the mountain. I got out of my car. There was no one else there. I went for my walk and I had fresh hair, fresh air. I had my hand sanitizer and I made sure that I had a hand sanitizer when I got out of the car and when I got back in the car to make sure I was clean. So no one stressed out. I had social distancing and I thought the best place for me to go is to go up the mountain. Um, so I did. And I don't know who, who is there anybody else here who's a bit of a, a driving speed demon? I, I wasn't speeding, but I must admit the exhilarating feeling just, just, driving and winding my little car up through the mountain was just oh it brought out this whole little inner child in me reminding me of how much I love open spaces and I love the rainforest and I love freedom um so if you are not in quarantine I recommend going out into somewhere and um just having a bit of open space and connecting with nature again but um as I got further and further up the mountain and and my my phone service dropped completely out um there was many things that came up and I realized um, some, some solid truth about myself. Hey, Melanie. Hey, Belinda. Hey, Lucy. And, um, and I realized that the best place for me to be right now amongst all this chaos and losing my job was that up the mountain was probably the perfect thing for me to go and do. Um, so I've gotten out of the car and as some of you may have realized there's a, a fair bit of stuff I put through Snapchat and, um, Instagram today. And there's some messages. I just stay tuned. I've got something really really uh that something came through that was very powerful that i really really want to share with you guys because i think it's going to be important for every single one of us to hear right now so anyway i'm off walking and i'm walking along and i thought wow this is beautiful like why haven't i done this more often you know here i am always wishing for more time and the universe went oh here you go princess more time oops be careful what you wish for um, but it was so glorious to be up there and just climbing down further into the mountain and feeling the change in the temperature, the change in the atmosphere. Um, and one thing I, I really quickly um, noticed was that the, the air is cleaner and it's, it's really bizarre. Every time I've been to the mountain, I've noticed that it was always not as nice as I expected it when I got up there. But this time it was like Mother Nature is kind of going like, like, here we come. You guys are getting it. You guys are giving us space to repair things. So I got to the water edge and um, some of you may have seen on Snapchat and or um, the stories in Facebook. Um, I did a bit of a weird ceremony because I have shaman friends and they are incredible, insightful humans. And one thing we need to realize is that um, right now Mother Nature is asking us to do our part in giving back. You know, the mining industry, if you want to get into these sorts of things, um, it's really important that we actually realize that we may have taken too much and Mother Nature is now kicking our asses for it. So I went out and did a bit of a process and you all might think that I'm just all science and all technology and all about the online world, but there's a massive part of me that's very, very spiritual, um, a total hippie and what some might call is like a white witch sort of a thing, but I do my part and I, and I enjoy what I enjoy. 
And so I went down after speaking to my shaman friend and she said white roses and red roses are really great to give back. Um, and I'm actually going to do one of her shamanic processes later. And I've actually shared on my Facebook um, something that she created, Claire Kelly, her name is, and she created this shamanic process. It's now a long video, but it's for children, children to understand what's going on energetically and understand how they can actually do what we call a despacho in giving an offering back to mother nature um, to say sorry and to say thank you. Now, last time I did one of these, which was two years ago, um, I was in a really bad place, major anxiety, depression. I felt like my world was going down. There was a bit of suicidal stuff going on there, but I went through this process with um, Claire Kelly and I did a full despacho. I went away for the weekend and we just did this massive ceremony and it was incredible. It was very, very beautiful. It brought me back to some, some real roots, some earthy roots. Um, boys, pull your head in. Uh, and so it was two weeks later and things started to shift a lot. Hey, Phil, you're going to see a different side of Shana that you guys don't get to see at Vulcan. Um, and... It was two weeks later and things had this dramatic shift and I had these phone calls come through. I had these opportunities come back through. I had money falling into my account. It was really random stuff. And I was like, what the heck? And my shaman girlfriend rang me at the same time. She's like, how are you going? And I went, dude, my day has been blah, 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 blah. And she just went, remember the despacho two weeks ago? You're welcome. And so she's doing another one right now. And I'm actually going to do my own tonight um, because she's actually got some some wonderful content that she does. This is just a plug quickly for her, but I'm going to get onto my story about today. So stay with me. Hey, Christy. Hey, guys. Um, so, hey, Christy. Hey, lost my job today uh, with MWD. Nearly a decade working for the company and it's all gone. But everything happens for a reason. So I, um, yeah, so I went up to the, um, I'll get onto my story. I went up to the mountain today and... I took a white rose and a red rose and I just sort of sat in the water, the freezing cold water, mind you. And um, here I am, the spray is spraying on me. It's freezing cold and I've stripped down into my undies and i um, sitting at the water edge. And wow, the chatter that comes up, like ice baths. And people speak about ice baths and I'm like, that's disgusting. So here I was and, and my inner child was like, no. And then the other part of me was like, get in the water, like, get in there get amongst it and every part of me was like yeah no yeah no no I know I need to but ugh. so I jumped in and it was freezing there was a bunch of young teenagers there um on the far side and they were like trying to get in the water and I was like all right I'm gonna get in the stream part where it's running water um I gave my offering I um I took a moment to rinse out all my crystals because guess what I'm not just about science I'm actually hugely about a lot of spirituality and I do believe that we're all energetic beings and this is something that really came up was the fact that as much as you guys might want to poo-poo the whole woo-woo, um, everything is energy. We are all energy. And the reason I went up the mountain and those in isolation may be a bit bitter that I was out doing that. Um, and I, I love you and I respect your emotions and I uh, accept them. But um, I realize that in today's society with everything that's going on, our energy, our frequency is our own responsibility, right? How we choose to show up energetically is how we choose to contribute to the world or not contribute. And I took it upon myself to go to the mountains and shed the energy. I knew that I could sit in this and I could be depressed and I could have been really upset today. And I did have my moment, but then I realized it was time to pack my um, food and, and go for a hike. So I did. And I chose to go and shift my energy and release all of those stuck, terrible fears and emotions. Because guys, there is enough out there. There is enough fear mongering. There is enough... Um, posting of negativity there's enough fighting and enough hoarding going on I didn't want to be a part of that and I and I think it's my responsibility to go and shed any of those recognize those parts of ourselves uh, but then go and shed them so I went up to the mountain and I did that and um and went through a bit of a process and jumping and sitting in that cold freezing water in my undies was um hilarious but um just another adventure of Shana's life uh, Melanie did the same yay as long as we're doing it in social isolation it's fine but um I feel like it's our due diligence right now to step away from what's going on and go and clear the energy ourselves um, and do our part and connect with nature as much as possible. Walk with bare feet around your backyard as much as possible. Um, there is an, an elevated amount of energy that is, is not serving us. So going and tapping into the energy that does serve you is a really big important part. But what happened was... I was sitting by the water and this is where Shana gets really woo-woo and you get to see the real side of me. Um, 
I actually took a really cool deck of cards that I bought a while ago and I have a message and if, if you, you may want to tune out here, but I guarantee you there's a message in this for every single one of you that um, when I did the reading, I was like, oh, wow. And then I was reading the reading. I, I stopped. It was freezing down there. So I got out of the water and I walked my way up, buzzing the whole way to the top and sat up in the part. There's a part at the top where the stream splits and you go over a bridge and the stream splits and it goes into this waterfall. So I'm standing there and I thought, you know what, I'm going to pull out, it's nice and warm here, be a bit of a lizard. I'm going to pull out the book and read actually what those cards said. And that's the reason why I'm doing this live, because what it said was something that I don't think was a message for me. I think it was a message for all of us. So I'm going to share it and take from it what you will. This is my gift to you uh, right now. Um, before I go, I'm going to jump off the line and I'm going to jump into the private group. This is the private group is for everyone who's taking their health seriously right now and has jumped onto the 10-day immune booster. If you haven't yet, let me know. I can do that for you. It's completely free and you get a whole month of doing genetics uh, for free. Um, so I've created a group to support that and that's where I'm now doing all my cooking and all my fitness. But back to the message. So the first card I pulled out, um, I wonder if you guys can see that. It's a a male and a female energy embracing in passion and love. And it kind of stands for intimacy, closeness, trust, commitment, reconciliation, equality, union, codependency, and taking sides. And so bear with me, guys, please. I know if you're not a woo-woo, please stay with me because it was profound what came through with this. Um, so it, it, it's key phrases is going beyond um, infatuation and attraction, intimacy, sharing, giving and communication, which is really important for everyone in isolation right now. Time to forgive and seek reconciliation. We're all going to be forced to have a lot of reflection time right now. And I think um, the key messages in what I'm sharing with you guys is that now is the time to reflect on all of that. And while I was walking today, I was really reflecting on a lot of these, these aspects. A meeting of the heart and the mind, um, putting judgment aside and blame, Cherish, cherish all of your loved ones and maintain independency and avoid codependency. So even though we're going into this situation, let's avoid codependency on some of the old ways and start to face the new paradigm that's actually being forced upon us and become a little more fluid, a little more um, in the beginning of a relationship. Don't we all just like open ourselves up completely and become completely like infatuated? But we also realize that we'll suddenly when you're in a new relationship, you are more willing to accept the current state because you're in this heightened state of, um, of passion and love. So you're more likely to um, embrace what is and, and learn to go with the flow. Like you're learning a whole new person. So it's like building a new relationship, a new love for the situation that is in some way format so that you're not exper experiencing pain. You're actually adapting and falling in love all over again. The meaning of this one, the meaning of two water represents a relationship that has moved far beyond infatuation and physical attraction and one that is built upon a foundation of deeper mutual love, respect, trust and the sharing of interest and values. Who around you do you have relationships with? How can you actually dive into those relationships and find newfound love, newfound connection? Um, oh, I'm touching my face. Ah, um, new, oh, I'll sanitize. Um, on that note, like last, the other night I did a, a, a session with my little sister and her partner who have just done the 10 day immune booster for free and they were reading through their profiles and we did like a couple's session and they were just like finding these newfound relationship uh, appreciations and aspects of themselves that they hadn't actually even bothered to look at. Um, the next chapter of where we're going with life at the moment is, is understanding ourselves in a greater level. Bear with me, there's so much more. Um, this relationship is a unification of two hearts and minds, not with the purpose of becoming whole or complete in each other, but with the intent of sharing and to enrich, to enhance each other's lives. This is us as a whole community right now. This is us as a whole world. How are we able to be whole in ourselves and enrich ourselves so that we can enrich each other and enhance, and enhance each other's lives? Oh, I was reading this going, this is just perfect timing. This is a time of giving, sharing and communication. A relationship is founded on intimacy to share your thoughts, your feelings, your goals, your fears with the one you love um, and to be intimate, to hold them, to listen, to share your interest um, is to be intimate. And to show your interest is to be intimate. Um, to show affection by reaching out and stroking their cheek. Now, I know a lot of us are going into isolation and a lot of us may not get this for a while, but it's like reflecting on what is it that we love? What is it that we're actually missing? Like 
take time to not mourn it, but appreciate it more. Like really settle in and be like, what is it that I love? What, if it, what is it that I'm really going to miss? And through this isolation time, let's actually figure out what it is that we are going to miss and love. What is it that actually lights ourselves, our souls on fire that we're yearning for? And pay attention to that because those are the things that the day-to-day bullshit and life chaos has dim-witted us, dimmed us down to not actually realize that we actually want to need. And quite a lot of us are now going to be faced with the things that we've actually denied ourselves the most. Interesting. Um, This also represents a time of forgiveness and reconciliation. If a rift has developed between two lovers or friends, now is the time to let go of the hurt and anger. Put aside judgment and blame. Do not allow arrogance, wounded pride or ego to destroy a relationship. Where you can take responsibility for your own choices and actions within a relationship. Be mindful of how they have been impacted and influenced that and how they have influenced the relationship. The two of water invites you to communicate, to forgive or apologize now. Now you understand why I thought it was so beautiful. Now there was a second card that I drew out by the water. And guys, if you're just tuning in now, please stay tuned. There was a, this is an even bigger, more beautiful message. And this one is by far definitely. And if if you resonate with this, please share, share this on your page, share this with your friends and family, tag them below, because this next message will give you chills. This next message will hit your heart in places that you may not have realized are actually existing. And maybe you've been denying. Um, So this next one, it looks a bit doom and gloom but also incredibly powerful and actually, actually, oh my God, oh my God, I've just realized there's a picture of me looking like this a year ago at an event, a Xena, I was in brown, but oh my gosh. So this one is perception. So if you're tuning in now, Shana can be more than just science and technology. I'm actually very, very woo-woo and um, I'm now going to grant you all the opportunity to explore and understand the woo-woo that Shana is. But um, while I was at the water's edge um, out hiking today, I did a couple cards and they were profound, the messages. So I'm going to read the second one. If, you have, if you're just tuning in now, go back and watch it. Um, so the second one, the key words is perception, understanding, worldview, opinion of self, clarity and objectivity. What? Now you can sort of see where this is going to go. Um, please, if this if this resonates with you, give me a high five. Give me a communication below. Um, tell me what, what, what resonates with you in this next one because this will be a profound message for everybody. The key phrases of this card is the perception shapes your worldview. Understanding what your senses tell you is important. Knowledge and understanding are limited. Change perception, uh, changed perception cannot be unchanged. Is your perception clouded? With the worldview that's going on right now, this is going to be a beautiful message for everyone. And please, please stay with me. Please stay. Um, So the meaning of this card, perception. Um, The fifth of the influential cards, uh, okay, pertains to organization, identification, and interpretation of sensory information in order to understand what we sense or experience. Um, When the perception card appears in your reading, it symbolizes the opportunity or need to look at how you analyze and interpret your experiences. I think after this morning losing my job, um, hey Charlotte, hey beauty, um, hey Amanda. So I think after losing my job this morning, when I drew this card, I was like, oh, oh, thanks. I get it. Get out of my own way. Anyway, I'll keep reading. So tell me if this resonates with you. Give me a high five. Give me some interactions. uh, Give me some love. Um, so this card symbolizes an opportunity or a need to look at how we analyze and interpret our experiences and how your interpretation then influences your choices and your ability to see and weigh options or opportunities. How many of us are being faced with a really big, hard decision right now? How many of us are losing our jobs? How many of us are feeling like we have nothing left? It may actually be our perception. Kimmy, you're on. Hello, darling. Please stay and watch. I've... Um, what's the rest of it too um best outlook thanks charlotte i i have to i mean in this time and in this phase of our lives if we don't get past it we're going to fall apart and get squashed we will become the cobblestones on the road where i prefer to actually be creating and moving forward so our lives are built upon foundations laid by our perception how we perceive the world and those around us um and, and those around us influences our ability to learn Our understanding of cause and effect, our ability to see and weigh our options and to make decisions. 
there is no area of our life that is not influenced by our perception. How many of you would have that? Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you. Our lives can be empowered and fulfilled because of how we perceive our reality. It gives us our confidence. Our lives can be destroyed in an instant if our idea, if our idea of what is real is revealed to be alive. Our perception is shattered at that point right how many of us have had this right now a perception like for me i was like no nah, i'm safe i'm fine in my job i have like the most knowledge i've been in the company seven years i'll be fine next minute fired <laughs> our perception can be accurate and precise it can also be false and founded on misinformation illusion and imagination our knowledge and the knowledge we possess that is born from our education our study and our practical application can increase our perceptiveness However, our knowledge can be limited, it can be inaccurate and flawed. For example, our knowledge of other people is limited by the fact that we only know what they reveal to us, right? Same with the government, same with all the stuff that's happening around us right now. It is limited by what we perceive. Now, I um, uh, lost myself. Uh, they might be like us in some ways, but completely different in more ways, Um However, they are not us at all. We do not know their innermost thoughts and feelings. So what we know of them is often based on little fact and a lot of assumption. Looking at what we're doing here, we're going into, guys, we're going into so much here. We're going into a phase where we are going to be faced with the innermost fears and emotions of those around us and of society itself. So please remember that everything is a, is a, is a assumption. Everything is a perception of what's really going on. And we're really only seeing one facet of each person around us, not really uh, the true depth and the, the true complexity of it. Like here right now, Charlotte, you're so beautiful. You're saying like, you're loving my outlook. I've, I've still had my shit fits today. I've still had my breakdowns today, but I'm choosing to show up anyway. And I'm going to choose to go exercise after this, even though I probably feel like eating chocolate and drinking. That's the truth. Um, so it, go, it goes on. And this, it, please bear with me. There's a really great message in this, guys. And thanks for tuning back in. I can see some of you going and coming again. Um, have you ever heard the story of the six blind men and the elephant? This is gold, guys. This is gold. Please. Um, hey, Blake. Nice to see you on here. So have you ever heard the story of, of the six blind men and the elephant? They each stand before the elephant. The first man stands at the elephant's head, his hand upon the elephant's trunk. Because of the way the elephant's trunk is shaped and feels moving beneath his hand, he believes that the elephant itself is like a snake. The second man stands at the elephant's tusk. Because of the way the t of the tapered shape and the point at the end he, uh, and the feel beneath his hands, the second man believes that the elephant is like a spear. The third man stands at the elephant's ear. Because of the way it is shaped and feels flat and wavy from side to side, he believes that the elephant is like a fan. The fourth man, these are all blind people, the fourth man stands with the elephant's leg. And because of the thickness and the strength of the elephant's leg, he believes the elephant is like a tree. The fifth man stands with the elephant's side. And when he feels the mighty expansiveness, he believes the elephant is like a wall. Finally, the sixth man stands with the elephant's tail and becomes... And because of the way it feels, he believes the elephant is like a rope. With, the, um, with six totally dis different opinions based on the information each blind man possesses, they then fall into conflict. Each believes that he is right and the other is wrong. The blind men begin a war with each other, so fixated on their own beliefs uh, that they are willing to inflict harm upon each other. Isn't this society right now? This is where I got chills in this. Hey, Jody, isn't this where I got? This is where I got chills today, realizing this, the um, the relevance of this message that came through, and this is why I'm sharing this. Suddenly, a sighted man comes upon the six blind men and shouts out for them to stop fighting with each other. He asks them why they are fighting, so each of them tells the man their tale. The sighted man looks at the elephant and then looks at the blind men before him. He says, "But you are all right." The elephant's trunk is like a snake. The elephant's tusk is like a spear. The elephant's ear is like a fan. The elephant's leg is like a tree trunk. His side is like a wall and the tail is like a rope. But you are also wrong because each of the parts you have touched are all just parts of the whole elephant. I'll let that sink in for a second. We all have perceptions of what we're experiencing. 
Each of the blind men then circle the elephant and touch the other parts. And with the newfound information, um, the new and multiple perspectives offered, each is willing to coincide and uh, realize that both are incorrect and correct at the same time. Their, cease, uh, their, their increased perception born of multiple perspectives has finally allowed them to see the whole elephant and the big picture. Our perception can shift and alter and be enhanced or uh, in a heartbeat once new information born in a different perspective is provided. Once it is altered, it cannot be reordered, but um, it cannot be re restored to what it was because we now have a new perception based on the information we've received. Um, even if we believe it to be true, it is revealed to be an illusion, um, the perception that we each hold. Uh, there is no reset button for our perception. We can only gain new information to increase our perception and create a new ideal or a new perception going forward. Um, every change in our perception changes our reality. So check what you are perceiving and make sure you have great information coming to you. Every change of our reality influences our choices that we make. So what is the perception that you have right now? Hence why, even though I am in a bit of a situation myself, I also need to have a greater perception of what's actually going on around me and how I can be and how I can receive and how I can contribute. Like the first card said, now is a time of loving and having compassion and giving and, and coming together with communication, ironically. Then we look at in the past. There are issues that are clouding our perception and preventing us from moving forward and interpreting and understanding the moment with objectivity and clarity. If you are feeling like you are clouded by things of the judgment of the past, um, do your best to cut them away and pierce the veil. When the perception, uh, when this card appears, blah, 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 it is for us to take the high ground and see the bigger picture from an, from an objective point of view without the past influencing our interpretations of the facts. This is our entire world, right? This is why this is a message I feel that should be shared with everybody. So please share this with everybody. Um, Remember, the past is the past and that every situation is different, regardless of the similarities that we might see. Circumstances change. People change. There are times when what we perceive may be projected by past memories and feelings. If so, um, there is a need to step back and detach emotionally and realize that while our feelings are valid, um, they might also be clouded by judgment from our senses. Now is an opportunity to take a fresh approach and change your perception. So when I found out I lost my job today, instead of sitting here in a, a terrible energy, I decided to go out to the mountain and wash it all away, release it all away, step into a different energy, a different perspective, a different perception, and allow myself to find gratitude for what I have got left. You know, um, it, to be to be frank, you know, I've only got a, a week or so before I'm really in a big mess. Um, so I do have to find work immediately. But I also know that, when I look after myself, my own perception, my own energy, my own frequency, then it's it's me choosing to either give my energy and my perception and my um, my frequency to the betterment or to the deterioration of our current situation. So that's our choice, even though we might be in a total shit fit right now. Total. Um, it's our choice as to whether or not we're contributing our energy effectively moving forward or whether we're trying to spiral out of control into into things that we actually really don't have control out of, over. Uh, this is the perception of our present situation. Um, okay, so to do so, try this exercise. Sit for a moment with a familiar... This is a really cool exercise that I'm going to... I did do while I was sitting there. So um, sit for a moment in a familiar space. Find an object and then focus your attention upon it. The more you focus, the more everything around the object will seem to blur and become less defined. Only the objects that sit nearby can remain clear, but even they will still become less defined um, than the objects that you have your attention upon. Those objects that sit in the periphery of your awareness, they are, neither, they are either noise or less important. As you look at the object, uh, the subject of your attention, you will notice that smaller details will become more uh, noted and more more detailed indeed. Try to remember them if you can. Now move to a different position in the room and focus your attention on the same object. Is what you see exactly the same as what you initially saw or have the details changed? This is our perception on life. This is why I took myself out to the, out to the um, rainforest today and just tried to change my perception on everything. Um, 
more than likely the subject of your attention looks quite different from this new angle. It is also interesting to note how many details you remembered from the initial perspective. How much of what you recall is accurate? Do you remember all of the details or only a few? Hey, honey, stay with me, stay with me. This is just an example of how when you change your perspective, everything changes. Details, memories, peoples, past experiences, current situations. Once you regard the subject of your focus as a, from a different perspective, your perception also changes. When you shift your perception, you will also see something new that offers more information or brings something that was hidden from the light, uh, into the light. So this is what's going on right now, guys. So much of us, so many of us are having this awareness and having stuff taken away from us. But instead of sitting in this, this like, this funnel of like everything falling apart, when we can, when we can realize that if I actually just take myself and shift my perception, if I go and do a body weight exercise, or if I go and go for a walk with the dog, if you are in confinement, change the room, open the doors, open the windows, burn some incense, change the lighting, do something, go Go on a cleaning spree again and wash everything with a different fabric softener and make a different smell. Change your perception of what's going on. Um, stop watching the news and, and go watch a cool, cute, funny movie. <sighs> you might also discover that you initially perceive and what you initially perceive and remember is not accurate um, as you believe. Okay. In addition to um, inviting you to change your percep your perception and your <laughs> in addition to Inviting you to change your perspective, the perception card, which I'm reading out to you right now, also signifies a need to determine whether you are creating your reality or whether you are allowing others to shape it for you. Both can be problematic if you are not mindful and aware. The media, for example, distorts almost everything. Can you guys believe, like I was sitting there reading this going, oh my word, um, distorts almost everything. What is normal and what is not? What is beautiful and what is not? New discoveries, political and current events, new and even history is distorted by social media and the media. What's offered by the media is done so from a limited perspective and not everything you see is the truth. In fact, much of it is complete fabrication designed to influence you to believe what they tell you. A little bit of truth is hidden with lies so that we will focus upon the threat, the threat of uh, Focus upon that thread of truth and believe in that truth. And then, by association, believe in everything else that is offered alongside. Thus is the media funnel. Um, uh, yet, we can sometimes do the same with our own personal perception. We can take the limited bit of knowledge that we have and um, extrapolate it. We expand upon it. And sometimes, if there is a wealth of information to call upon, our perception is... Uh, our perception is truthful, but at other times it is also an illusion itself. I know it's like, woo, mind blowing, mind blowing. So true. Thank you, Charlotte, for still being here. It means the world to me. <laughs> um, reality is fact based. Our perception is our interpretation or our understanding of the fact on both a sensory and an intellectual level. We can perceive things differently, but it also does not make reality any less factual. Facts stay the same and are not altered or changed by our perception or our opinion. It is not a fact if it involves or changes over time. It is a theory, a, um, a hypothesis, an idea or a concept. That's one to keep in mind with everything that we are hearing. Reality is so much more than just what we are perceiving with our limited senses. And to compare to um, other animals, humans do have a rather limited sensory capability. Therefore, what we know about the world is incomplete and always will be because our senses do not allow us to perceive all that is. And because our senses cannot perceive it, our minds struggle to comprehend it. Who else is having like brain gasms right now? Um, we cannot stay. Uh, we cannot say with absolute certainty what is and what is not unless we stick to the facts. The facts that cannot be disputed. Our perception tends to be shaped by um, a mix of fact and stuff. Yes, um, so much so that our mind um, uses it to fill the gaps and give those facts some depth, some substance, and context to relate uh, to be able to relate it to us. Uh, a blend of fact and imagination is quite normal, hence why we dream, hence why we daydream and things like that. 
Remember, our minds can be very selective. We tend to focus on a few details and rely on our memory and exploration to fill in the gaps. This is where understanding our story that we keep saying and playing can actually uh, trip us up. Our eyes do the same as our minds. It is, um, it is a scientific fact that our eyes do not actually see all that we look upon. Instead, we only see the part of what our surround, uh, only see a part of what surrounds us. Our minds fill in the holes. Our minds create our reality. Has your perception been altered? Can you say that you know something to be true? with absolute certainty. Can we really in today's society actually perceive that? The perception card, which I'm reading out to you now, um, is not about instilling doubts, but it's actually about increasing awareness. Knowledge is power. Wisdom becomes about, uh, wisdom comes from understanding, but it only brings power and wisdom if you understand it's ac- it is accurate. Otherwise, our perception will be flawed. Now you understand why I want to share this. There is more. If you want to stay here, stay here. But I would also love if you would share and contribute. Therefore, take time to question everything. Double check, even triple check your facts so that you can be certain that they are indeed facts. We are all looking from a different angle. Yes, thank you, Charlotte. We are all looking at this completely from a different angle. Shift your perspective and see a larger, clearer picture. And also be willing to embrace the awareness that what we perceive to be true and in a reality um, with the benefit of an increased perspective um, may be revealed to be an illusion to what you thought to be an illusion. Uh, fuck, stuff that up. <laughs> we perceive to be truth and reality uh, and might, with the benefit of an increased perception, be revealed to be an illusion and what you thought to be an illusion or a lie may actually be truth. Ooh. Finally, be open-minded when you feel challenged by others' perception. This is something about guys are about to go into potential lockdown and whatnot. This is really, 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 really important for us all right now to be aware of. Be open-minded when you feel challenged by others' perception. It is the truth for them. And just because you do not agree does not make their reality any less real or truthful than your own, especially if you are working from a personal viewpoint instead of a factual one beauty isn't it um uh, uh, uh. i'll just see if I, this is worth sharing this next part mm, okay perception is fluid whilst it cannot be reset it can and does shift and alter all the time the reason I'm reading this out and the reason why this was drawn to me is that the fact that it symbolizes the need to take a moment to look at how, um, uh, uh, to take, take a look at how a changed or altered perception may affect your long-term goals and desires. Um, perception is everything and if your perception has been changed, your thoughts, your feelings and your desires for the future may have changed also. This is where you need to check in and, and see where you're really sitting with everything. Um, that being said, Um, It takes time for the effects of an altered perception to filter through and be processed and understood fully, especially in your present day, uh, especially in your present day to day life. Um, It is in this if it is in a state of flux or confusion. Hence why, again, I took myself away from the chaos that was created for me today and I took on myself to go gain a new perspective. Um, If you have recently experienced a moment that has altered your perception and dramatic dramatically, then give yourself time to absorb everything. Let things settle in before you set to making a big change in your life that may, in turn, change your future direction to that one. Um, in a moment of future hindsight, in a moment of future hindsight, you may realize that you have created something that you didn't actually want. So, while everything's happening for us all, be less reactive. Give yourself time and space. And if you haven't done the free t- ten D, if you have not done the free health type. Um, 10 day immune booster program it's a free opportunity for us to figure out which health type you are and when I read this I realize that this is particularly important for our endomorphs our endomorphs need a lot of time and space uh, and a lot of other health types can be a lot more reactive and still be safe in that um, and a lot of them actually learn by pain um, so if you haven't done it yet jump on and do the free health type test uh, the free 10 day immune booster Because that will give us a little bit more of an insight as to who you are and how this is really actually quite relevant to each and every one of you. Which will lead to greater discussions in my private group. But 
Was that not mindgasmic for some of you? Was that not ringing true? Was there a few messages in there for you guys? I'd love to hear how and why. Um, it's ironic. I have quite a few decks of cards that I, I have and I've ignored them for quite some time. But while I was sitting here today having my meltdown, um, this one just jumped out at me, literally fell off the shelf. And I went, ooh, okay, I'm listening. I'll take you with me. Um, and as soon as that one fell out of the shelf, this one fell out of my shelf, it, um, it also knocked a couple of crystals and I went, oh, well, I'm going to water source. I will go and clear everything out and give myself uh, some new perspective. And then those cards were drawn. So woo, it was all meant to be. Thank you for sticking through with that, guys. I'm going to go move my body. I'm going to jump into my private group right now. I am offering within that the next 10 days. Um, oh, I will... Charlotte, I'll pop the link in there right now um, as soon as I get off here. It's a free thing. You just need a tape measure um, just to go through and do all your measurements. Um, and that will assist you in understanding your type. Please, as soon as you've done it, it's free. As soon as you've done it, please take a screenshot of what health type you are and send it to me. And I'll add you to my private group. I'm going to jump over there and go do a workout for everybody to do from home. Um, because I need it for my sanity. Um, and... I will also be doing different cooking tips, um, utilizing my genius. And if you are going to do it, hey, um, Scott, nice to see you've come in at the end. But don't worry, there's a, there was a, a, a worldly message that came through in this, in this chat today. So I, I really pray that you go back and watch the whole thing. Um, if you are going to do it yourself, I really recommend you get your partner to do it. And then potentially we can jump into the group and have some discussions about partners and understanding your dynamics. And if you're anything like my little sister and her partner, we had a discussion the other night when they did theirs together and they were just like mind blown at things that they hadn't realized about themselves. Um, and the funny thing, the thing that, oh, there we go. We're back. After um, I got off the phone to my little sister, I rang my dad and I was like, dad, I've now made my mother, uh, my father, my sister's do the, the 10 day program because it's a why wouldn't you but um I found out what their health types are and so I'm kind of like oh yes I now understand you so much better but I rang dad and I was like dad I'm on a cloud nine even though everything's gone bad um I've realized this working with people and helping them understand their genetics is what I want to do for the rest of my life talking with my little sister and her partner and them understanding and exploring each other was the most incredible sensation for me to be able to be of service in that way, to build that that awareness and understanding of love and compassion for each other again um, in the thick of all of this that's going on in the world was just um, tickle me pink. So I'm going to pop below the 10-day the booster link. It's free for everybody and anybody. Do it yourselves. Get your partner in there and do it. In, uh, give it about 25 minutes to get it done. Um, you do your measurements. You measure these cool parts in your body. Then you answer a heap of questions. And that will then give us your genetic profile. And you will be mind blown with how much is sitting within there. Um, and I will also add you into my free group where you can get a heap of workouts and some recipes. And you can talk to me about um, I can assist you guys with food creation, um, creating from what you have, ready, steady, cook style. Um, but please, guys, if, if any of this has tickled you and you've, you've, you've gotten curious, come along and let me be of service. Let me, while I have a bit more time, let me give back because it helps me to feel good and change my perspective on the world. That's my little, um, that's my, uh, what would you say? That's my um, oh, selfish aspect in this is that, um, come across to the group, come across to what I'm doing and, and allow me to be of service because it helps fill my cup more than you realize. Um, I love you all. Thank you for sticking through this. Ah, oh my gosh, Charlotte, you are amazing. I'll pop in this, this in the comments. Thanks, Melanie, for staying on. Um, let me know your thoughts and feelings and anything that came up. And if you want to connect, you're always welcome. Love and light, guys.